Hey Loft, so it's time for another one of the daily uploads, and this time I want to talk about another subject that is near and dear to my heart, comic books. Now, I'm not going to give you some big long history of a bunch of comic book characters. That's not what this is about. We're just going to talk about superheroes in general. If you want to get into specifics, you can always ask me about it later, because as those of you who had to ride on the bus to camp with me soon discovered, when you get me started talking about superheroes, I can go for a very long time. I want to talk about superheroes in general. Because people line up to see these movies. There's so much buzz about these movies and about these characters and about these TV shows and about the comics in which they originally appeared. Iron Man, Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, the whole Avengers roster, like all of these characters are so important to our society. And I want to suggest something that I'm betting you weren't really expecting, which is I think this is our mythology. You know, if we go back to ancient Greece, they believed in all of these myths. You know, the idea that the gods that they worshipped could interact with humans and, you know, would stage fights between the people. And, you know, all of these gods had different superpowers, like, you know, Poseidon ruled over the oceans. And, you know, Zeus was up in the sky and sending down thunderbolts. And really, when you think about it, the idea that there's a guy who puts on a blue costume and a red cape and has heat vision and can fly around the world super fast... It kind of sounds like a Greek myth to me, but we got to tread carefully because remember that the Greeks thought those people were gods. Sometimes in our society, maybe we fall guilty of that idol worship too. Is in Acts chapter 17, Paul had a great response to this style of thinking. You see, he was visiting Athens, and especially he was in this meeting, and he was surrounded by idols. You know, there were just idols all around them, just these statues that the Greeks had built that were objects of worship that people were offering sacrifices to. And Paul was completely astonished by this. He hated it. It made him furious. And so when he was called on to speak in that meeting, he had a great response. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown god. Now, what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. The god who made the world and everything in it is the lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. On hearing about the resurrection, some people sneered and made fun of Paul, but others wanted to hear more, and he was invited to speak again. And there were people who joined the church that day because of what he said. Paul looked around at the statues in that room. He saw that one of them was to an unknown God, and he used that to talk about Jesus. Now, you and I don't have idols in the same way today. Sure, there are some people who are really diehard Steelers fans, but, I mean, that's a little bit different. Anyway, though, <clears throat> comics, that is definitely an area where you're dealing with characters who have these godlike abilities, but at the same time, we know that they're not gods. All right, some of the attributes of Superman are impressive and are things we could imitate. Or, you know, Spider-Man, with this call of with great power comes great responsibility, those are great words to live by, but at the same time, it's not the gospel. 
These characters give us a way to talk about the gospel. These characters are a way to introduce to people who are totally unfamiliar with Jesus. It's a way to speak in their lingo. And not just about comic books. Really, any fandom can work this way. This was how Paul ministered. He found the people's obsession, and he played off of it. And he said, you know, you have this idol to an unknown God. I'll tell you who that unknown God is. I might say, you know... You read a comic book about a guy who dresses up as a bat and fights crime because of his sense of justice. But let's talk about what real cosmic justice looks like. So yeah, I like comic books. I like watching movies that feature superheroes because these characters are fun. But even more than that, they're a way to talk about the gospel. The Greek myths didn't die off. They just took on a new form in our society. And it's up to us when we see that happening, to say, ah, I know who the altar to the unknown God is really for. And I'd like to tell you about him, how he died for you, and how you can live for him. So yeah, I hope this puts comic books in a new light. I hope it puts superheroes or really any fandom in a new light for you. Because these are a way to talk about the gospel.